just give people a minute to join us. The recording has just started. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the class. Okay, we're going to pray and uh, then we will get uh, started. Okay, all right, Aradhana, Aradhana Kamble, Aradhana. Can you please pray so that we can get started? Just pray for the class. Yes, Pastor. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this new day. We worship you and we praise you, Holy Name, God. This ministry of Foundation Lord, we pray Lord, help to all the children, Lord. Uh, all children, they gather Lord, help all the verses to remember and learn the new thing, Lord. Help, help all children, Lord, I am, and I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. We're going to get started in our class today as we are learning uh, about faith, about um, how to um, walk by faith, how to exercise our faith in God and, and, and just see God work in our hearts and in our lives. I want to um, uh, quickly review some of the things we did uh, last week and then uh, we'll move forward with uh, some of the new things today. So I'm going to just share my screen and um, sorry, let's see now. Oh, not that. That's a different class. Okay, Jesus teaching on faith. All right. Um, so we're going to uh, just go forward from here. And I know that um, towards the end of the class last week, uh, we had some questions. We were answering some questions and uh, uh, we had left a few unanswered. Uh, so we will uh, pick that up, um, those questions towards the end of this hour, uh, this lecture. And uh, of course, we'll take uh, any additional questions that come up today. Right. So just to quickly uh, review some of the things we uh, started off uh, looking at. We started talking about um, what did Jesus teach us concerning the subject of faith? Uh, what, what was his teaching? <clears throat> uh, we see that, you know, and we just put them in these statements. So basically we're just summarizing uh, his teaching uh, in some of these statements. So we said Jesus taught us that all things are possible through faith. So uh, when we when we look at life situations, when we look at you know when we face challenges, whatever, uh, whether it could be uh, uh, situations of need in our lives, maybe we uh, need God's provision in certain areas. Maybe we need doors to open up. Uh, maybe we need circumstances to change. Maybe we need healing. Uh, yeah, so there could be various situations that you know we face at various points in our journey through life. We must always approach them from this perspective of what the Lord Jesus taught us. He said, all things are possible. He said, if you have faith, nothing will be impossible for you. So... You know, even if there's a big mountain in 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 our, in our way, and then that's just speaking metaphorically, that's there's something in in our way that's obstructing us, hindering us. You know, he said, "Look, if you have faith, and and all it takes is a mustard seed faith to move that huge thing. Uh, faith is so powerful, and uh, so he says, if you have faith, nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing will be impossible for you. So." That's, that's Jesus' teaching. 
to us. And we must just embrace it. This is what our master taught us. Um, and he will teach us the same things if he, you know, if he were here today. Um, we also said that um, Jesus taught us that we will receive according to our faith. If you want to call it, this is the law of faith. He said, according to your faith, let it be done for you. Let it be to you. So this is a law, a spiritual law, and it will not be broken. According to your faith, it will be done. And no force of man, no power of hell can stop you from, from stop your faith from receiving from God whatever God has promised. So we must be again convinced about it. My faith will receive. I will receive according to my faith. Nobody can stop it because Jesus set this in place. He said, according to your faith, it will be done for you. Right? So today, in any situation, uh, you and I must look at it from that perspective. According to our faith, we will receive uh, because Jesus affirmed that for us. A third aspect of Jesus' teaching on faith um, is that he taught that our will and desire is involved in the exercise of faith. So uh, when we are talking about you know, faith, uh, we must understand that our will is involved. And uh, you know, we, we looked at the example of this, this woman from Canaan and Jesus said, let, you know, she, of course he commended her great faith. Great is your faith. But he went on to say, let it be to you as you desire. So her desire was involved. And the King James would say, be it according, be it to you according to your will. You know, the King James, this is new King. Uh, here in the new King James, it says, let it be to you as you desire. So, uh, we see that Jesus is, is seeing the connection between great faith and desire. That she had a determination, a determined desire. She is going to have it and nothing is going to stop her. So we also looked at some other examples where, you know, this blind man came. And it is a very interesting question that Jesus asked him, you know, what do you want me to do for you? You know, a very interesting question. Why would you ask a blind man something like that? Well, who knows? Maybe all he wanted was some money. Or maybe all he wanted was some clothes. You know, but Jesus wanted him to specify, what do you want me to do for you? And he responded, Lord, I want to receive my sight. And Jesus said, your faith, go your way. Your faith has made you well. So we are seeing again that we must be very clear. Uh, we must have a determined desire that accompanies our faith uh, uh, for us to exercise faith. So that's very, very important. Be determined that you are going to get the pro whatever God has promised for you. Be determined that, you know, if God has put something in your heart, it is going to be done. You are going to get it done with faith in your heart. You, you're, you're not divided about it. Uh, you, you're not, you know, undecided about it. You are determined uh, and you have a determined desire that you will get it done, right? So in other places where he taught about prayer along with faith, he said, what things you ask, uh, what things you ask or whatever things you ask, the King James says, whatever you desire when you pray, right? Believe that you receive them and you will have them. Or in John 15, 7, he says, if you abide me, my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. <clears throat> you will ask what you desire. Right? Now, the problem with, with many of us is, you know, we say, oh, God, whatever you want, give it to me. You know, we, we think that's, that's the right way to pray. But God is turning around and saying, what do you want me to do for you? What is it that you are asking? What is that you desire? Because God wants us to engage wholeheartedly with him. You know, it's very easy to say, God, give me whatever you want. Well, um, but what is it that you want? I mean, are you committed to receiving what God has already promised? Because that is an expression of your faith in God. And it's an expression of your faith in his word. 
then God wants us to be in that place of faith, faith in order to receive what he has already promised. Because if God has promised it, that means he's already revealed his will to us. So it's, it's no longer a question about his will because uh, his will is already expressed in the promise. Otherwise, he would not have promised that for us. So when God promised to heal, when God promised to provide, when God promised to make an open door, when God promised to intervene in life situations, he's already revealed his will. And so for us, it's a matter of receiving uh, by faith. And so we must be determined uh, to receive. Right. And then we were talking about some of these other related things, you know, how people generally pray. Now, we're just clarifying this. Um, Jesus did teach us to pray, your will be done on earth. But this is not a passive posture where we just sit down and say, oh God, your will be done. Whatever happens, happens. No, this is a determination that I want to see God's kingdom come. I want to see his will be done. I'm here to establish his will on earth because I'm a co-worker with God. And so we are co-working with God in order to see his kingdom come and his will be done. So that's the posture. That's the engagement uh, he wants us to have. Not something that's passive, but something that's active, something that is pushing forward to see his kingdom advance and his will be established here on earth. Another common um, uh, uh, text that people would uh, use um, in this context about you know being determined is you know Jesus prayed uh, uh, not as I will but as you will. That is true. He prayed like this, but if you look closely, it's only one time and only one situation that he prayed like this, and this was in the Garden of Gethsemane when he had to go to the cross. He never prayed like this when it came to heal, healing the sick or casting out evil spirits or working miracles. He never prayed like this, right? Uh, he, it was always, he commanded it to be done. He just said, Father, I thank you. You've heard me even before I've asked. You know, you know, so he, he prayed very, very in faith. He demonstrated that for us. Only when in the garden of Gethsemane, when he had to go to the cross, when he had to surrender to that ultimate purpose for which he came, he said, Lord, Father, you know, it's, it's, it's a very painful thing. He, the one who was without sin is going to become the sin, be made sin for all of us. And in that situation, he said, not as I will, but as you will. So uh, this prayer doesn't mean we, we do not pray this in every situation, because in all of the situations, we know the will of God. Only when, you know, when God is calling us to step into a life assignment or something like this, uh, we, we surrender, we surrender, we yield uh, to the will of God. Okay, so we're going to move forward here with the teachings of Jesus. We just quickly reviewed um, some of the things we had covered last week. Um, number four uh, is this, that faith is key to seeing God's glory manifested. Faith is key to seeing God's glory manifest. We said this, um, you know, Jesus is right there before the tomb of Lazarus. And uh, Lazarus has been dead there for four days. Uh, Mary and Martha are, you know, very, very uh, in grief. And uh, Jesus has moved the tombstone away. Martha raises her objection saying, you know, his body must be stinking. It must be stinking right now, four days. But Jesus said, hey, did I speak to you? That means he must have had some com private conversation with them. We mentioned this. Uh, where he instructed them, just believe you will see the glory of God. So can you just picture that? Just try to imagine that in your mind. Jesus coming uh, to Mary and Martha. It's four days since Lazarus has been dead. And uh, Jesus knows what the Father wants him to do in this situation. So he comes in there. And he takes uh, Mary and Martha aside and he tells them, look, I just want you to believe we will see the glory of God. So in a private conversation, he, he, he shares that with them. We don't know what else he said or uh, we don't know if he told them that, look, I'm going to go there. I'm going to tell them to move the tombstone. 
and I'm going to call Lazarus out and uh, we're going to see the glory of God. I just want you to believe with me. I I'm not sure exactly, you know, what all went on in that conversation. But later on, when he comes to the tomb, uh, uh, he says, move the stone. Martha objects and Jesus says, hey, Martha, did I just tell you? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. He's reminding her of what he had just spoken to her, the conversation he had. He said, just believe and you will see the glory of God. That means he had this conversation, trying to encourage their faith, even in that situation, believe. You will see the glory of God. And so this is how you and I must uh, consider life situations. Things may be rough, things, things may be hard, uh, but we believe the promise of God. What did God say he will do for us? What did God promise? Sorry, there's a train going by here. Uh, what did God promise that he will do for us? You know, believe that promise, even in difficult situations. And it's key to seeing the glory of God. What is the glory of God? The glory of God is a visible display of the greatness of God. The glory of God is a visible expression of who God is and what he does. That's the glory of God. It's a uh, it's an expression, and in this case, of course, it's going to be expressed through a miracle of resurrection, uh, of raising somebody from the dead, or it could be expressed through the healing of a sick person. It could be expressed through the provision uh, that comes in to meet a need. It could be expressed in so many other ways, but the glory of God is putting God being put on display. So it says, if you believe, you will see God displaying who he is and what he does in your life, in your situation. So faith is key to seeing God's glory manifested. Number five, we said this, that Jesus taught us that when things go from bad to worse, we just stay in faith. Just stay in faith. Just believe. Right? Uh, we looked at the example of Jairus. Uh, this, uh, when, when he heard the news from his home, Jesus' immediate response was, do not be afraid, only believe. Don't let this news rattle you. Don't let this news shake you. Don't be afraid, only believe. And if he, would, he was with you and, and me um, in a situation, a similar situation, what would he say to you and me? He would say, just believe, don't be afraid. Just keep believing, just believe. Right? So that's how Jesus would respond. So that's what you and I must learn to do, that no matter uh, you know, what the situation is, we must stay in faith. Okay, so let's move forward from there. We, um, we covered most of that pre um, earlier. So we start off with point number six in chapter four on page 32. Jesus also taught that faith is released through words spoken out of a believing heart. So could somebody please read for us Matthew 17, 20. It's there on the PDF. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20, please. Somebody could read. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, your assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will see to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Thank you. Thank you. Could somebody else read Mark chapter 11, verses 22 and 23, please. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Man. Thank you. And one more passage, Luke 17, verses 5 and 6. Could somebody read that? And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. 
Amen. Thank you. Let me just see. I don't know if somebody raised their hand. Oh, there she raised your hand for something. All right, I'm not sure. All right, let me go back to sharing my screen. All right. So, we see in all the three, I mean, in the three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three of them record this part of Jesus' teaching on faith. Right? Of course, uh, the actual wordings may be a little different, but the essence is the same. Matthew, he sa Matthew says, put us like this, he says, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will say to the mountain, move from here to there, it'll move and nothing will be impossible for you. Right? And Mark, uh, Jesus said, have faith in God and whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. And there's no doubt in his heart. I believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Now, and, and we also read what Luke wrote. Increase, when the disciples prayed, increase our faith, he gave them the same response. So let's, uh, let's spend some time on this because this is a very important teaching from the Lord Jesus on how to put our faith to work. Having faith is good, but you and I need to know how to make that faith work. You know, how, how, to get, how do I get my faith to work for me, uh, do things in my life, uh, you know, in situations? How do I make it effective in life situations? Well, here is one key that Jesus gave us. And it's recorded for us in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So let's highlight some of the things Jesus is teaching us here. First of all, he says, you know, if you have faith, you will say. You will say. Matthew 17, 20. Mark 11, he says, have faith in God. He says, you say. And then Luke also says, you can say, right? So saying, speaking is one way that Jesus taught us to release our faith. So some people say, well, I have faith in God. Okay, wonderful. How are you going to release your faith? You know, have faith in God, Jesus said. Have faith in God. Okay, you have faith in God. Wonderful. How are you going to, what are you going to do with that faith? How are you going to cause that faith to affect change in this realm? Faith in God is a spiritual thing. You have it in your heart. Very good. But how is it going to affect the spiritual, the natural realm? Sorry. How is it going to affect things around us? How are we going to cause the faith that we have in our hearts to bring about a change in the world, I mean, in, in our circumstance, in our situation? Jesus said, if you have faith, you will say. So our words, the words we speak, release our faith into the natural realm. So you and I have faith in our hearts, faith in God, faith in His Word, faith in His promise. Very good. But notice Jesus didn't say, if you have faith, you will think. He didn't say, if you have faith, you will think. He said, if you have faith, you will say. So thinking positive is good. I mean, we need to think positive, and that's good. That's wonderful. But thinking about God, thinking about His Word, which is important, but thinking is not going to cause the faith you have in your heart to affect the natural realm around you. He said, if you have faith, you will say. So this is important. 
Why? Because Jesus taught us that. He said, this is what you need to do. You know, like we saw here, the apostles came to Jesus and they said, oh Lord, increase our faith. They thought, you know, the real issue is we need more and more faith in, inside us. And he said, look, it's not about the size of your faith because even if you have faith like a mustard seed, even if you had that tiny, weeny amount of faith, the important thing is to get it out so that it can affect change. So you can have huge faith sitting in your heart, but it'll do, good, do, you, do us no good if you don't get it out. So it's not about how big the faith is. He said, look, even a small amount of faith, if you get it out, it'll affect change. But how do you get it out of your heart, into the world, into the environment, into, the, into your life situation? You must say. So that's the first thing, very important thing. Each one of us must understand about faith. What Jesus taught us about faith, you must speak. You must release your faith through words that you say out of your mouth. You will say. Then Jesus said, if you look at all of these passages quick, carefully, he said, you say to the mountain. Say to this mountain. You say to this mulberry tree. So whom are you speaking to? Not speaking to God. You're not speaking to another person. You're speaking to the thing in this natural realm. So the mountain is figurative. It's representing something in this natural realm. I noticed Jesus said mountain or mulberry tree, meaning it's something in this natural world. It can be an inanimate thing. And mountain is an inanimate thing. A mulberry tree is a plant. It's, it's something in this world. So the point is this. You speak to what is inside in the natural realm. You speak to your need. You speak to your body. You speak to the, uh, you know, the, the, the situation. Jesus spoke to the winds. Jesus spoke to the waves. He spoke to a fig tree. He spoke to demons and cast them out. He spoke to people's bodies to be healed. Stretch out your hand. You know, be opened, he said, to the blind or the deaf or the dumb. So we speak words and we speak two things in the natural realm. Now that's very, you know, that's very, what to say, um, counterintuitive. That means we don't do it normally. You know, you don't find people speaking to objects in this world, natural. I mean, they'll think we're crazy. But Jesus said, if you have faith, you will speak, you will say, to the thing in the natural realm. You speak to it. You say, in Jesus' name, I speak to this thing. So I must speak to that thing. You know, Jesus spoke to sicknesses. There are times the, uh, the Bible says he rebuked the fever and it left. He spoke to the fever. He said, fever, leave. So he spoke to the thing in the natural. Uh, now, who taught us to do that? Jesus. He taught us to do that. So we are going to follow Jesus. Now, some people will call us crazy for doing it. That's okay. I'm just following Jesus. I'm just following his teaching. Some people will say, well, what are you doing? You're speaking to this thing. You're speaking, you think by just talking to the situation, it'll change. Yes. Why? Because Jesus said, speak to the mountain. The mountain represents anything in this natural realm. So I can speak to a circumstance. I can speak to a situation. Uh, I can speak to a closed door. Uh, I can, whatever it is, I can speak. So people will think we are crazy, but remember you're following the teaching of Jesus. 
So Jesus said, if you want to get faith out of your heart, what must you do? You have to say it. And what do you speak to? Speak to the situation. Now, yes, we exercise our faith also in prayer. We'll be seeing it at the next point. But he, talk, he spoke, told us to speak to the situation. He didn't tell us to speak to, uh, to God about the situation. He said, speak to the situation. God already knows the situation. There's nothing wrong in saying, God, I thank you that you are opening the door for me. That is, that is fine. But God said, I want you to speak to the closed door. So you say, in the name of Jesus, I command this door to open up. Because God said, he'll go before me and he'll make crooked places straight. So you speak to the door. You speak to the way that needs to be made open. And then he said, what do you speak to it? Give it, when you speak into the natural, command the desired result. Speak out the desired result. He said, tell the mountain, move from here to there. So you're not saying mountain, oh, you're such a big mountain. No. You're not talking to the problem about how big the problem is. No, you don't talk in that. You're speaking to the situation and you're speaking your desired result. Mountain, move from here to there. Sickness, I command you to be gone. Door, I command you to be opened. Need, I command you to be met and paid in full. You know, debt, I command the debt to be paid in full and canceled and cleared. So you speak the desired result. Move from here to there. Move from here to there. Okay? Or be removed and be cast into the sea. Be removed, be cast in the sea. Be pulled up by the roots to be planted in the sea. What are you speaking? You're speaking the desired result. This is what I want to see happen. So you speak that. Right? So, how do you release faith? Jesus said, you've got to say. You've got to speak words. You've got to speak to the, situ the thing in the natural. And you're going to speak the desired Result. What do you want to see happen? Speak the desired result. And once you speak it, what must you do? Don't doubt in your heart. Don't doubt in your heart. So you've got faith in your heart. What is that faith? It's faith in God. You're believing God. Because God promised something for you. God promised he will, you will be healed. God promised he will provide. God promised he's your way maker. He will open the door. God promised he's your provider. He's your protector. He, you know, God has promised your faith is in God. And you need to guard your heart. Don't let doubt get into your heart. Now, I want us to understand something important. Satan, the enemy, is the thief. He wants to rob us of our faith. And he comes in order to rob us of our faith. He's going to first put doubts in our mind. Thoughts of doubt. Sometimes these thoughts of doubt can come simply because of the winds and the waves. That means, you know, we are living in the natural world, so we look at the natural situations, and your mind is processing, and your mind is saying, hmm, wow, it's really bad out there. Uh, the, you know, the winds are very strong, and the waves are really high, or the mountain is really huge. Your mind is processing. So what happens is doubts can come into our mind either because you know we're looking at the, the, the situation around us and our mind is processing it or the enemy is throwing thoughts of doubt. Sometimes even people may throw doubts 
because they don't understand faith in God. They may not know the promise of God. So doubts can come in our mind because of these things. But Jesus said, don't doubt in your heart. So there's a difference. Most of us will struggle with questions in our mind. Because our mind is logical, our mind is processing this information, and our mind doesn't necessarily have a, an answer. How is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Can it really happen? So there may be you know, those questions in your mind. But when you look into your heart, you say, hey, I'm believing God. God's promises in my heart. So guard your heart. Even if there are questions in your mind, guard your heart. Jesus said, don't doubt in your heart. But what must you believe? Believe that what you're saying will be done. That's what he tells us here. Believe that what you're saying will be done. You're believing that what you're saying will be done. Now you're saying it because of faith in God. So you're not just making affirmations. You know, the world copies a lot of things that we preach and teach. So the world talks about, you know, positive uh, speaking and positive mind and whatever that. But we are talking about what Jesus taught us. He said, you have faith in God. Because you have faith in God, you're releasing your faith by your words. Now, don't doubt in your heart. Continue believing that the words you're speaking, which, are the, which is the promise of God, will be done. Why is it that you can believe that what you're saying will be done? Because you're saying the words of God. Because your faith is in God, your faith is in His promise. This is not a makeup thing. You know, this is not a uh, uh, something you just, you're just affirmations you're making or statements you're randomly saying. No, this is based on faith in God. This is based on the promise of God. So that's why you can believe that what you're saying will be done. I believe that what I'm saying will be done. And Jesus said, if you do this, if you do this, said you will have whatever you say. Said you will have what you say. It's what he taught us. It will be done. So this is a very important teaching from Jesus on how to release faith. You know, many people come in various situations, just believe God, just trust God. Yeah, okay, trust God. But Jesus didn't say, just trust God. He said, have faith in God, then I need you to do this, verse 23. So trusting in God is not just, you know, a, a nice Christian thing to do. You have faith in God, but you don't stop there. You're trusting in God. You're believing God, but you don't stop there. You've got to go on from verse 22 to verse 23. But he said, you've got to do this. You've got to speak to the mountain. Tell it to be moved and put it, God cast from the sea. And you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe that what you say will be done. You will have whatever you say. Now, as I mentioned, sometimes... There is a process involved, meaning I may not start out with great faith. You know, I may have some doubts. I may have some struggles between my mind and my heart. But I keep continue doing this because God's word, God has spoken his word. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep declaring it. I'm going to come to that place that I will not doubt in my heart, but I will believe that what I say will be done. So that's why, you know, some people ask, okay, you know, how long should I do this? Do I do it once? Do I do it twice? Do I do it 10 times? Well, keep doing it until you see the desired outcome. 
because sometimes when we start out, we may not be in, in that place of mature faith, of complete faith. We're starting out wherever we are. And so we just keep at it. We just keep speaking to the mountain because every time you speak, you are also hearing the word of God and your faith is being encouraged. Your faith is being strengthened. So you keep saying to the mountain, mountain, this is what I'm telling you. Based on the word of God, this is what will happen. And you know, slowly doubts will be eliminated from your heart and your heart is coming to a place of stronger faith. So that's why you continue to speak, you continue to say. Now there are times when you speak and it happens right away. You know, you've just, you're, you're in that place of faith, you speak and it happens and you see the result. But there are times you need to keep saying it. Why? So that your heart comes to that place of perfect faith, complete faith. And you will see the result. You will be able to see the result. Okay? So I'm going to pause a moment here. Uh, and I, I just wanted us to dwell on this because it's a very important part of learning uh, to walk by faith. And uh, I'm going to just uh, take up some questions. Uh, does anybody have any questions that you want to ask? And I will also um, bring up the questions that we had from our class last week. Um, any questions? You all with me so far? Yes, Pastor. Everybody else? Everyone's very quiet. Nicholson, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Pastor. So I just wanted to, I don't know, clarify my doubt maybe because personally I've prayed from two resurrections. One was we, I think we all part of the one, one where there was an infant and one was an old person. And uh, I, I know that my faith, I believed in my heart and I had the faith. And uh, the only thing I could probably think of when you were teaching now is that I didn't speak to the problem, but I spoke that God healed this, I mean, raised this person up. So that's the probably probable thing I can think of. But is there anything else you can like add on? I mean, I, I still do believe that God will raise people from the dead. Mm -hmm. It's not hurt my faith in any way. So I still believe in that. But is there something else I can do in addition if ever there were to be a situation where I have to pray again for resurrection? Mm. Um, um, so... You know, so uh, about the particular situations, you know, we, we we don't know all the details in the sense that, you know, all the factors and one be the others also involved and all that. But um, generally what you do is you speak to the person and say, you know, in Jesus' name, you know, you speak to the person, you command the person to rise up and you command death to leave. And... Uh, uh, you command life into the person. So basically you are speaking to the person, speaking to the person who's at that moment dead and uh, you're commanding life to the person. So um, that's how we just, you know, just like how Jesus did it and we see in the, in the gospels, you know, it's a young man, I say to you, arise, you know, or, uh, to the child, say, arise, or you may say, receive life, or you may say, death, I break your hold off of this person, let life come in. So that's how we minister. All I would uh, say is, uh, you know, even when we don't see, like like in, in the cases we have in the past, if you don't see the result, don't we don't give up, we'll just continue doing it and just 
continue, you know, focusing on the on the promise, on on the word that Jesus gave us, and keep going, keep going, because you will see uh, good results, you know, in time to come. Okay. Thank you, first. Okay. Um, Yeah, just to you know, encourage our hearts. Just a quick uh, testimony. Some of, some of you who, who are part of the church may have heard this testimony, but for the benefit, um, uh, okay, Isaac, I see your note. Um, that's fine. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Uh, you can also watch the video uh, later. Okay. Yeah, I remember when our team was uh, ministering in. Uh, in uh, this was in some place in Gujarat. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a district called Navsari. So we were there. I forget the exact year. Uh, you know, our team. So we used to go around different places. But I remember one one evening. This was in a, in a, in, a, in a Navsari district in Gujarat, uh, the state of Gujarat, uh, western part of India. And uh, we were there. It's, it was kind of a village situation, so it's not a big town or anything. And we had that night, uh, we had an open air meeting. Uh, and it's not a big crowd. Uh, it was a couple of hundred people from village, village people. And the pastor there was hosting the meeting, was on the stage. And that night, we were, we were talking about the, might, the mighty name of Jesus, how powerful it is, how wonderful it is. And... Um, at the back of the, you know, so while I was preaching, I knew at the back some, some there was some commotion going on, uh, and I didn't know as I just, and this was kind of getting closer to the end of the sermon. We we're going to transition into praying for healing and miracles and all that. Um, and then there was some commotion happening at the back. And so the pastor who was hosting us, uh, hosting the meeting, he got off the stage and he went to the back and something was happening. And, in the meantime, I, I continued ministering, and uh, and uh, you know we we took some testimonies and all of that, and then uh, then we saw uh, the pastor walking up with a man. Uh, actually, there was a man and two others next to him holding him. His body was so stiff, and he was just like kind of walking in a very stiff way. And uh, he came up. So they brought him up to the stage and we were trying to understand what happened. And, uh, and they made him sit down. And the pastor said, this man was dead uh, at least 15 minutes. We don't know the exact time because you know this was in the meeting that was all going. This man was dead at least 15 minutes, but he's alive now. And uh, his, I could see there his family, uh, again, I think it's, it's his mother and his two or three sisters were there. They were all crying, making a lot of noise. And then we asked what happened. And then the pastor explained, you know, that uh, while, you know, the, at the beginning or some, some earlier part of the evening, uh, the, the family, that's the mother and the sisters, uh, brought this man from wherever they were they brought him to the meeting, uh, but he was very, very sick. And uh, by the time they brought him there, he died. He died right there. And uh, the, the, the way they know it is his body became just cold and uh, uh, you know, just you know, lifeless and dead. So that's when the, the commotion started yeah. happening. They started crying at the back and, uh, and things like that. So that's when this pastor went down. He went to the back. And uh, the pastor, you know, he suddenly, in his heart, he just said, hey, I, uh, you know, we are, we are hearing about the mighty name of Jesus. So in the local language, right, uh, uh, he just said, in, in the language, local language, he said, in the name of Jesus, rise. You know, and at that moment, this, this man, you know, rose up. And uh, so, uh, and so he'd been actually dead at least 15 minutes, right? And then they brought this man up to the stage, and you know, you have, you know when I was there, I mean, I was of course there. We touched him, and and uh, you know, this, his body was still cold. It, it was just, just, it was just amazing to be in that place at that moment and see a miracle that you know, 
this dead man was brought back to life. Now, one year later, our team went back to that same village or you know the same district. They purposely went and they looked for this man. Uh, so one year later, he was there, and uh, they asked, you know, uh, about a story and so on. Nicholas, you want to say something? Uh, Nicholas, in your your hand, did you want to say something? Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, uh, okay. So they went. They they, they met this man. He yeah, just took his testimony and so on. So uh, uh, it's just an amazing thing. Okay. So let's take our break. I and I see some questions coming. So we are going to uh, we are going to take up these questions and. Uh, uh, right after the break, okay? And I'm also putting that question that I copied from uh, last week. I think uh, this was from uh, Nicholson. So we will answer these questions uh, right after the break. We'll go for our break, we'll come back, and we will answer these questions and then uh, continue, okay? Uh, please have a quick break and come back and we will continue. Thank you. <laughs> 